Well, for this information coming in just by the minute, so I'm going to run through it uh, as we got it here. Uh, first of all, both of the, the attackers in northeast Paris and the attacker who took uh, control of this kosher store just down the street from me here were extremely well armed. Let's just go through the arsenal that was present uh, in northeast Paris as those two attackers uh, were assaulted by police. They had a rocket-propelled grenade primed and ready to go, a very powerful weapon. They had two AK-47 or Kalashnikov automatic rifles. They also had grenades. Let's talk about what the attacker here, the hostage taker, had here at the kosher market. He also had a Kalashnikov rifle. He had grenades. He had a 9 millimeter pistol. And in addition to that, 15 sticks of dynamite. Uh, so, so they were very much holed up. They were armed to the teeth, really, uh, to take on some of the best armed and best trained counter terror forces that France has. Let me give you some more because uh, prosecutors also discovering information about their terror connections. Let's talk first of all about Sharif Karwachi. He was one of the brothers uh, that carried out the attack on Charlie Hebdo. Uh, the prosecutor confirming that he traveled to Yemen in the year 2011 and that the authorities were aware not only of his travel to Yemen but also contacts uh, with terror groups inside Syria as well. So in addition to Sharif Karwachi, Karwachi's previous arrest, remember he was in prison for attempting to recruit fighters to travel to Iraq. Remember as well that in 2005, he was stopped at the border here in France trying to travel himself to Syria and then on to Iraq to join the fight against U.S. forces there. And in court documents we received earlier today, in his deposition during that case, he said that the reason he wanted to go to Iraq was to fight and kill Americans because, he said, Americans had mistreated the Iraqi people. Certainly very worrisome because we know that al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, a terror group he had ties with, uh, has its targets set, its sights set on the U.S. And I'm going to give you a another very interesting piece of information. The prosecutor says that French authorities recorded some 500 phone calls between the wives of one of the Karachi brothers and the wife of the attacker who took the uh, kosher market here hostage as well. Remember, throughout the day, uh, we, we were wondering, we had questions about whether these attackers were connected. Clearly, they were connected. Not only uh, that the attacker here uh, had called for, demanded the liberation of those two men, the Karachi brothers who had taken over, uh, the Kuachi brothers, I should say, who had taken over the, uh, the office in northeast Paris, but that their wives had been in touch 500 times in 2014 alone. Uh, you're really getting a sense of a web of terror here behind these attacks that, that held the city of Paris and its surroundings uh, in tension for three days. And, and as I said earlier, Wolf, this area here that I'm standing in was on lockdown till a short time ago uh, because, of course, that standoff took place just down the street from here. It's only now that they're uh, beginning to turn to some semblance of normality. Jim, I just want to be precise. 500 conversations, phone conversations between the wives of the two terrorists, the Kawashi brothers, and the wife of uh, Ahmedi Koulibaly, uh, he was the terrorist who went into that supermarket. Is that That's right? It. That's exactly right. 500 phone calls between the wife of the terrorist, Koulibaly, who took this uh, kosher market, and one of the wives of one of the Kawachi brothers. Uh, so, so clear, consistent contacts between the attackers there and the hostage taker here.